The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Kingdom Connection. Life is full of many great choices. Family, friends, careers, and commitments. Our calendars are booked and our schedules are full. And in the end, we're left with a sense that life is just too overwhelming. But the good news is that in the midst of all the clutter, God is still talking and it's time to be still and hear Him whisper, return to me. We're saying, God, for the next 21 days, I'm making a vow to you. It's not to the preacher, it's not to the fast, it's not to the church, it's not so my family will see it. I'm making a vow to you. God respects vows and when you make a vow to God and keep that vow, he will entrust great power to you. I know that's the truth because I have experienced it. Sometimes when I went on the fast when I was younger, I didn't even know what I was doing, but I made a vow to God and I wouldn't stop. I wouldn't quit because I didn't promise myself or people. I promised God. And sometimes the only thing that'll keep you on a fast is the fact that you made a vow. And I said, God, I will, I will vow to seek your direction and your will. And I'm so glad I did because he had it. He had it and he does for you. And here's one of the messages. We're not supposed to just be like and see how much we can be like the culture that we live in. That's why I love this time of 21 days. It says, God, clean me out, separate me, put your hand on me, mark me. I'm fasting that God would lead me in the right way for us, our families, our little ones. Everybody say our little ones. My family's on the front row this morning for the most part. And I've been fasting and Sharice has been fasting for many, many years for these children. And the burden never leaves. Don't you want your children to find the right way? Don't you want your children? To, don't you want God's hand, his tender touch to be on their life? Don't you, you can't ever, don't, don't you know they need your prayers now? Don't you know, parents, they need you to petition God? And I don't care how old they get, the older they get, I think the more I worry about them. That God would touch them and fill them with his Holy Spirit. Boy, I feel that youth thing again. I want to say to young people in this room, if you'll get in on this fast, I believe this one is for you. And for all our possessions, everybody say all my possessions. And the thing I felt like decreeing is this is a year of increase. Get ready for increase. Expect increase. Talk increase. Plan for increase. Believe for increase. I said shout increase. Shout it again, increase. I don't care if you don't even see it. I hear the sound of abundance. Increase. So I say to you today, there's no greater time to fast than at the beginning of the year. Because what you do in the morning, if I pray in the morning, it sets the course for the rest of the day. I read my Bible in the morning, it sets the course for the rest of the day. If I go to church on a Sunday, it sets the course for the rest of the week. And if I fast at the beginning of a year, it sets the course for the rest of the year. And God honors vows. Fasting is saying, God, I, I, I'm breaking the routine. I don't want to do the normal these days. I'm coming after you with all of my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And you want to get God's attention. You put that on the altar. You put your life on the altar. It's the quickest way I know to get into a position and place with God that you absolutely are cleaning out your life. You're returning to Him. You're saying, God, I'm giving you my family, my life, my future. 
your will is all that I want. I don't want my will. I'm fasting and praying to become sensitive. And it's relevant for today because people need to know the will of God today. People need to make the right choices today. People need to know and hear the voice of God guiding and leading them today. And you should never make a major decision without spending some time in fasting and prayer. If you will, every time acknowledge Him in all of your ways, He will direct your path. And especially when you just kind of fine tune your spirit with maybe a sun up to sundown fast or whatever what it is God leads you to do, there is a real, real benefit in learning to live a life where you honor God and you give yourself to Him on occasion through fasting and prayer. We want 2017 to be your best year yet. As you take time in the beginning of the year to slow down and listen for the voice of God through fasting and prayer, Jensen Franklin has prepared a group of resources to encourage you along the journey. This month, with your gift of $40 or more, you may request our tailor-made 2017 fasting kit, including Jensen Franklin's New York Times best-selling book, Fasting, that has changed the lives of millions of people around the world and is sure to do the same for you. In addition, you will receive a three-CD series set entitled Fasting, the secret source of power that will teach you the how and why of fasting. Things you've never seen, things you've never imagined, things you've never thought of, God has up there. And He says, answers are waiting in my presence at the top of the summit of the fasting mountain. Who will come on up higher? You'll also receive a brand new 21-day Bible study that will build your faith as well as a fasting guide. Get ready to encounter God in a more intimate and personal way as you refocus on Him through fasting and prayer in 2017. For more information, please visit JensenFranklin.org or call us at 888-888-3473. Fasting releases the increase. Every time in the Bible, people fasted. It not only brought deliverance from crisis and tremendous issues and unsolvable, seemingly, problems that people were facing, but almost every time people fasted, it released financial resources and increase into the hands of God's people. Now, there are three reasons God wants to increase you. Number one, for your sake. He said in Malachi chapter 3 that when you bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse, he said, I will open the windows of heaven and I will pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And catch this, and I will rebuke the devourer, catch these words, for your sake. God wants to increase you, number one, for your sake. He really does love you. He really does want the best for you. And he said, for your sake, I will do this. And then the second reason God wants to increase you is for his own sake. In Isaiah 48 and 11, he said, for, for my own sake, I will do it. God's name is on you. God's glory is who people know receives the glory when you are blessed and when you are helped and provided for. And He cares about you. So for your sake, for God's sake, and then lastly, for the covenant's sake, God wants to bless you. Exodus 32 and verse 13, Moses prayed, Remember the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember the covenant. And the Bible said God changed his mind when he reminded him of the covenant. So there are three reasons why God wants to increase you this year. Number one, for your sake. Number two, for his own sake. And number three, for his covenant's sake. There are three levels of spiritual blessing that we see in the scripture. And I, 
I think that it's significant that there's the Egypt level, the covenant relationship God had with his people when they were in Egypt. And I think it speaks of how most of us start out with the Lord. We're in Egypt, we're slaves to sin, slaves to the flesh, slaves to, to, to addiction and immorality. When Christ comes, and thank God that even though they were in slavery and in Egypt, he had a covenant relationship with them. He never gives up on us. He never lets us go. And Egypt was the land of not enough. And then there came a time when he moved them out and they moved from slaves and, and, and Egypt, the land of not enough, to the wilderness where God began to provide daily for them just enough. And they're barely getting by. And you know, as you walk with God, he'll take you from level to level. And then he'll get you in that place where you learn to lean on him. You learn to trust him. And you may not be storing up a lot, but you're getting by and you're finding out God's faithful. God's faithful. If I'll be faithful, God will be faithful. And even if I'm not faithful, he's still faithful. And, and then you see, you see them moving. It's, 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 it's moving now from slave to son. But then there's a third level, and it's the promised land. You move from Egypt to the wilderness, and from the wilderness to the promised land. You move from a, from a slave to a son. But now, he said, if you're going to get in the promised land, if you're going to move from not enough to just enough to the promised land is more than enough then you're going to have to go from being a slave in mentality to a son mentality. And now I want you to move from a son mentality, catch this, to a soldier mentality. Because when you go in the promised land, there will be enemies, but I want you to... I want you to kick them out and I want you to take the promised land. I want you to learn how to fight. He said, it's time for you to go from a slave to a son to a soldier. It's time for you to grow up now and realize that you're in a fight and you put on the whole armor of God and you begin to fast and pray and you begin to war and you begin to understand I was created for more than just getting by. I'm believing you, God, for increase of joy, of anointing, of influence, of testimony, a blessing, of healing, of miracles. And if you're going to get to that level, you got to come out of being a slave, always a slave, and even just being a son or a daughter of the Most High and getting by and just kind of showing up. And then you move into, I'm a soldier. Never increase comes without soldiers learning to fight. You become militant in your prayers. You become militant in your praise. You become begin to wage war. That's what we're doing for 21 days. Whether you know it or not, you have just entered into spiritual warfare. Don't let that scare you. But I got news for you. The devil knows who you are now. You've been fasting and praying. You've moved into his territory. He showed up when Jesus started fasting and praying. He always gets disturbed because there are demons who respond to fasting and prayer only. The Bible said, Mark 9, this kind comes out but by fasting and prayer. And what I'm saying to you is welcome to the military because you are soldiers now. You, every time you've been pushing away, every time you've been praying, every time you've been turning off social media and spending that time in the Word of God, you are suiting up and God is saying, uh-oh, I might have me more than a slave and I'm still in covenant relationship, but that's not my best for him. And I might have more than a son who's just getting by in the wilderness and learning to trust me, I might have a soldier who's actually going to invade the gates of hell and knock them down and take back what the enemy has stolen. Everybody take a praise break and believe him for increase. Shout increase. Shout it three times. Increase. 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 I think one of the greatest uh, chapters that I always like to go to is Matthew chapter 6 because that's where Jesus, you know, he, he raises three great themes of being a Christian, duties of being a Christian. He says, when you fast, when you pray, when you give. And we hear a lot about giving, we hear a lot about praying, but somehow we miss the whole message of fasting. And he says, do it in secret. Do all three of those things in secret. Pray in secret, fast in secret, and give in secret. And he says, when you do, 
What you do in secret, I'll reward you openly. In other words, God can't keep a secret. If he ever sees you doing something secretly to seek him in honor, to, in, in, in uh, attempt to please him, in an attempt to sacrifice and obey him and draw nearer to him, if he sees you do it in secret, God can't keep it, keep it secret and he'll reward you openly. And there's nothing that will, he, he also said in that same chapter, seek first the kingdom of God. And how do you do that? Well, we do it early at the beginning of the year with a fast and we're saying, God, we're giving you this whole year in this season of fasting and prayer. And there's something about it that God honors and he, and he goes all the way over into different months of the year and he, and he blesses our lives. And we also just want to kind of return to him at the beginning of the year to say, Lord, I've been busy. Maybe I've been distracted, but I'm yours. I want you to know that you are the priority in my life. So there's so many great uh, verses in the Bible from Isaiah chapter 58 particularly is the fasting chapter of the Bible. It is nothing but a whole chapter on what f a fast will do in your life. He talks about how that your health will spring forth speedily when you fast. He talks about how that you, even your noonday or, or your darkness will be like noonday. He talks about how that your, uh, you'll build a generational blessing. You'll lay a foundation for generational blessings. All of that in Isaiah 58 and it just layers uh, blessings that come upon, that comes upon the person who will fast and pray. We want 2017 to be your best year yet. As you take time in the beginning of the year to slow down and listen for the voice of God through fasting and prayer, Jensen Franklin has prepared a group of resources to encourage you along the journey. This month, with your gift of $40 or more, you may request our tailor-made 2017 fasting kit, including Jensen Franklin's New York Times best-selling book, Fasting, that has changed the lives of millions of people around the world and is sure to do the same for you. In addition, you will receive a three-CD series set entitled Fasting, the secret source of power that will teach you the how and why of fasting. Things you've never seen, things you've never imagined, things you've never thought of, God has up there and He says, answers are waiting in my presence at the top of the summit of the fasting mountain. Who will come on up higher? You'll also receive a brand new 21-day Bible study that will build your faith as well as a fasting guide. Get ready to encounter God in a more intimate and personal way as you refocus on Him through fasting and prayer in 2017. For more information, please visit JensenFranklin.org or call us at 888-888-3473. So when you move from Egypt to the wilderness, to the promised land, from a slave to a son to a soldier, from not enough, just enough, more than enough, there's one more level that this is all connected to. Jesus talked about three relationships that he would have with people. Number one, in, in, in the book of John chapter 10, he said there are hirelings. The hireling is someone who is there in relationship to get what they can get out of it. And many people, to be honest, when they start out, their lives are so destroyed that they come to the Lord with a spirit of a hireling. I'm not really committed, I'm not really, but I'm in trouble and I need your help and I, 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 I'm, I'm at my wit's end, I can't get free, I can't get delivered. You're a hireling. And he said, the way you know somebody's a hireling is when the wolf comes, they leave. When, when the enemy attacks, they're not really there for the long haul. A lot of people are in the church, sitting in church on Sunday morning, even in our church, and you're here for only what you can get out of it. You don't serve, you don't help, you don't ever get connected, you don't ever grow, you don't ever get in a small group, you don't ever use your gifts, you don't ever use your talents, you just come when you feel like it, you're not really a part of the, the you know, the, the, what God is doing, you are a hireling and you're here, aren't I sweet this morning? And you're here to get what you can get out of it. And that's okay, God loves you and we do too. But that is not God's best. 
Then he said in, in the book of Matthew that you will be called my servants and the greatest of you will be a servant. And he said, is the, is the master greater than the, than the servant or is the servant greater than the master? What he was saying is the greatest will be servants. So you move, catch this now, you move from being a hireling, what can I get out of it? But as you start growing, you move into, I'm moving from a hireling, just bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, to a servant. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Jesus has been too good to me. I've got to tell other people. I've got to get connected. I've got to get rooted. I've got to get planted. And I've got to start serving the kingdom of God. Surely there's something I can do for the Lord. Surely, if nothing else, my church can depend on me. And, and you move from a hireling to a servant. But there's one step even greater than a servant. And this is found in... in uh, in John 15, in verse 15, listen to this. He said, now you've reached a point where you will no longer be called my servants, but you will be called my friends. You've moved from a hireling, it's all about me, it's all about what God can do for me, it's all about, to a servant, it's about others, you're serving others, you're really growing, you're really doing, what, using your gifts, and then there's a final place in God, because this whole thing is about a relationship with Him. There's so much more to this thing called Christianity than just doing a little religion on Sunday. He wants to be your friend. And he wants to make known to you the plans of God for you and your family and his kingdom and this church. And you get behind it and you give yourself to it. And suddenly your life, your family, everybody takes on purpose and meaning greater than you could ever dream. And then what is astonishing is once he knows you're his friend, watch this. Now we're back to the fast, Matthew 6, and I'm closing. But what did he say? He said, when you fast, when you pray, when you give, I'll give you an open reward. And he said in that chapter, some will receive 30-fold. That's the hireling. Some will receive 60-fold. That's the servant. But some will receive 100-fold. That's my friends. Why? Because I can trust them. Because they've walked through the wilderness and been faithful with a little. I've watched them progress. I've watched them move from a slave mentality to a son mentality to a soldier mentality. I've watched them be faithful with almost nothing and then just getting by. And now they're my friend. They're not just a hireling and they're not just a servant. They are in intimate relationship with me. They love me for me. And so now that I've got a pure heart, I'll just keep pouring on more and more and more and more and more increase. Not just money, anointing, opportunities, power, spirit, the anointing, the, the, the presence of God, the direction. I'll make known to them my plans because they're my friend. They're not in it for that. They're in it for me. But because they are connected to the vine, they just keep producing much fruit. The key to this thing is connecting to Jesus. And he wants, listen to what I'm saying, He wants this year to be more to you than a Sunday morning experience. He wants to be your best friend. I thought about, you know, how that different people in the Scriptures had, had a secret covenant with God. And for me, personally, the secret source of power in my life and in this ministry has been uh, fasting. That when we needed a breakthrough, when we needed, uh, when I felt dry, when I felt empty, when I felt like I was just becoming mechanical, and, um, and I knew I was always in relationship with God, but I didn't feel the fellowship. And there's a difference between being in relationship, I'm His child, I'll always be His child, regardless of how I feel. But when, you, but when you feel the fellowship beginning to fade, when you fast, if you'll push away from that table and fast, 
it's amazing how the relationship is always there. And when you fast and pray, the fellowship begins to happen between you and the Holy Spirit. And it is a secret source of power. You put, praying is good, but you put fasting with prayer and the results are multiplied and powerful. My name is Cindy Wright. I've been going to Free Chapel for 11 years and I've been doing the fast for 11 years as well. In July of 2014, my mom um, was diagnosed with a liver disease. Um, they said in order for her to live, most likely she'd have to have a liver transplant. Over the next two years, she progressed and got worse. So in January, when we did the corporate fast with Free Chapel, I was fasting for my mom's healing. And I trusted God, but I didn't know which way He was going to choose to heal her, whether it was going to be on this side of heaven or the other side. It was a Wednesday afternoon, and um, it was about 4.15, and I got a call from my mom's nurse. And she said, uh, Cindy, I just want to let you know, like your mom's at the top of the list right now. We just listed her on, and with your mom's blood type, like we, we can't, of course, give you any guarantees, but you know, it doesn't really look good for her. And I just remember feeling like, okay, this is going to be the end. You know, she made it to the list and this is going to be it. So I was walking out of church four hours later that night um, and I got a phone call from my mom and she said, Cindy, they have a liver. We're going tonight. We're going. And I just remember stopping and just crying. It's like, I can't believe you did this. Doctors and nurses from different floors, different units were coming by to see the lady who had been on the transplant list for four hours. It just doesn't happen. And I don't know if they were believers, but I feel like that maybe they were after that happened because it was just an amazing thing. The greatest blessing that comes out of fasting is getting in God's presence and just hearing what He has to say to you. The miracles are a byproduct. Those are, those are treasures, but the true treasure is having that relationship with God and knowing that you can trust Him through no matter what you're going through. I am so thankful that she's here with us this year and that we can do all the things that we always have done together. And I'm just so thankful and grateful to God that He gave my mom her life back and He gave my kids their grandmother. We want 2017 to be your best year yet. As you take time in the beginning of the year to slow down and listen for the voice of God through fasting and prayer, Jensen Franklin has prepared a group of resources to encourage you along the journey. This month, with your gift of $40 or more, you may request our tailor-made 2017 fasting kit, including Jensen Franklin's New York Times best-selling book, Fasting, that has changed the lives of millions of people around the world and is sure to do the same for you. In addition, you will receive a three-CD series set entitled Fasting, the secret source of power that will teach you the how and why of fasting. Things you've never seen, things you've never imagined, things you've never thought of, God has up there. And He says, answers are waiting in my presence at the top of the summit of the fasting mountain. Who will come on up higher? You'll also receive a brand new 21-day Bible study that will build your faith as well as a fasting guide. Get ready to encounter God in a more intimate and personal way as you refocus on Him through fasting and prayer in 2017. For more information, please visit JensenFranklin.org or call us at 888-888-3473.